Hi, I'm Angela Nicholson, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you a few of the basics of retouching portrait images. So you'll be able to turn an image like this into one like this. The cloning and healing tools are some of the most useful tools you can use when retouching an image. It's best to work on a new layer so that you protect your original image and you can reverse any mistakes that you make. So I'm just going to add a new layer by selecting Layer, New, Layer. And that's just an empty layer. I can just click this icon here to make the layers palette visible. So you can see we've created a new layer already. The next step is to zoom into the image, so I'll just click on this uh, magnify button and zoom right in. I can go to actual pixels. If I hold the space bar down, it turns to the scroll icon. Now you can see there's a few little uh, blemishes and pimples here, and we can repair these using the healing tool, which is here. We just need to make sure that Sample All Layers is selected so that we sample from the image below. Just click on there and get a tick in the box. The healing brush needs to be a little bit bigger than the pimple that you're repairing, so it's about the right here, size here. If I just click on it, you can see it's automatically repaired it. I can just go around just repairing these odd little pimples. The healing tool is also useful for getting rid of stray hairs, perhaps like this eyebrow just here, or this hair. You just click on it and wipe over and it will disappear. I'm using quite a large brush here, it would be better to use a finer one really. So just make this a little bit smaller and then we could just touch in here. So I'm using quite a heavy handed approach so you can see what to do. Obviously I'd advise taking a little bit more time and care when you're doing it. Now I want to tackle these minor wrinkles and slightly darker areas. Now I'm going to immediately create a new layer. Again. Now I'm going to turn the opacity of this layer down to about 30%. And with the clone tool selected, you can see I've got um, all layers selected here. Click Alt and hit the mouse button and then just sweep across these lines. Now if I turn the opacity up, you'll see it's quite a heavy handed approach. You can see those lines being covered, but if I turn it down, it's a bit more subtle. So just Keep resampling, keep cloning, and carry on. If you wanted to get rid of uh, dark circles, you could change this mode up here to lighten. And using the same tool, just click Alt, go in, and it would just lighten dark areas. And again, you can adjust the opacity so you can see more of what you're doing, or less to make it a bit more subtle. For this image, I'm going to apply a general skin smoothing treatment. As usual, I'm going to work on a new layer, and this time I'm going to use a duplicate layer. So I go to Layer, Duplicate Layer, and there we go. Now I'm going to set the layer mode to Overlay using this drop-down list. And I'm going to invert the layer by pressing Control i Next, I'm going to apply a high-pass filter, going Filter, Other, High-Pass. This filter is normally used for uh, sharpening images, but we're going to use it here be, um, to soften the image or sections of it because it's actually um, inverted. So um, the radius is 10, which is fine, so I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm going to apply some Gaussian Blur using Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And if I just move that to one side, you can see as I increase the pixel size, the amount of blur is actually reducing. In this instance, I'm going to use a figure of about three. You may want to use a slightly higher figure to have a more subtle effect. Now I just hit OK. Now I'm going to create a layer mask simply by holding the Alt key down and selecting the layer mask button here. There we go. You can see now that the uh, effect is all masked off and we want to start painting it in where we need it. So if I just select a brush um, with a white paint, then I can paint in 
areas that's a little bit of small brush let's have a bigger brush with a nice soft edge and then we can paint in where we want the softening effect and you can see it's happening on the forehead there already let's make the brush a bit bigger still and then all you need to do is paint round where you want the softening to apply and just avoid the eyes, the eyelashes, the hair anywhere that you need to remain quite um, sharp so eventually you can build up a mask in the shape of the face which you can see appearing there on the right in the black box so there we have it, it's quite a simple approach very neat and quick to do once you've finished painting in the mask if you want, if you feel it's a bit too um, strong you can reduce its opacity using this slider so I can take it right down, you can see a few pimples appearing there or I can push it right up and they're all uh, merging in so it's up to you where you want to position it and that's it whether you shoot RAW or JPEG files you can actually do a quite a bit of retouching using Adobe Camera RAW for starters there's a spot removal tool up here that we can use just click that and this works in a very similar way to the cloning and healing tools it's going to be helpful just to zoom in a little bit more first now we can use this slider to make the radius of the uh, brush a bit bigger you see it's quite large take it a little bit lower it's not bad maybe go a little bit smaller there we go and then we can use that to spot that brush bit out and we just go around spotting out these little blemishes. If you want you don't have to use the uh, sliders to adjust the radius you can just uh, click on the image and then sorry I'll just do this once click and slide the mouse and you see the green circle pops next to it and we can just adjust that so basically you're just clicking and moving your mouse to adjust the size of those two circles so that's one useful way of adjusting uh, raw files now if we just uh, fit that to the view you can see this needs a bit of color adjustment and obviously we can do that in the usual way that looks a lot better already just adjusting the color temperature but we can also use the clarity control to adjust the um, local contrast on the skin now normally we'd increase it to sort of give the appearance of more sharpness but with the skin we want to tone that down so we just slide it the other way and you can see that the skin is looking much more pleasant, much softer and it has a glow about it rather than looking sharp. If I just send it the other way you can see it's becoming quite over sharp and not very attractive but if we soften it down we've still got the detail of the hairs on the chin but the skin's looking a lot better. In this exercise I'm going to change the colour of the subject's eye. Now I need to create a hue and saturation adjustment layer I do that by going to layer, new adjustment layer and then hue saturation and just click OK. Now if I just move this palette out of the way we can use the hue slider to adjust the colour of the image and that will adjust the colour of the entire image as well as the eye but we can just see what we want to go for. So just slide the hue backwards and forwards until you find the one that you like. I quite like that uh, greenish note there. So I'm going to stick with that. Now with the layer still selected in the palette I'm going to hit Control i to invert the mask. As you can see the image has gone back to its original state but we can paint in the eye colour using a white brush which is selected here and we just paint over the iris You need to stick to the iris because if you go over the edges you'll also paint in the colour into the rest of the image. But if you make a mistake just change the colour of the brush by clicking here and then you, could, you can paint back over what you've just done. Just go back and of course you can zoom in or out to make it easier. There we go.